Let's be honest, parenting can be messy and hard, but also so rewarding. In this podcast, we'll share all the ups and downs of parenthood, as well as share some of our favorite tips and tricks for parenting using both our experiences and expertise from our professional lives as a speech and language pathologist and teacher, but also our everyday lives as moms just trying to balance it all. We're so glad you could join us. Hello and welcome to And Then We Had Kids. I'm Jenny. And I'm Sheena. We are excited you guys are listening today. Hopefully you took a listen to our previous episode um, and highlighting that this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we had a friend come on and share a really important story. So if you haven't taken a listen to that episode, please go back at some point, and listen to it. But today I thought we'd share a little bit about um, some mental stuff for ourselves and especially as it's getting warmer, summer's just around the corner. We, at least Sheena and I, are going to be with our kids a lot more than we were during the school year. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Right? Like, so I remember when my daughter was starting school this year. I pulled her from school last year because of COVID. I was having a baby, just so many unknowns that I thought for her as a little two year old. And for me, it was like too much. I just had her home during that whole wonderful pandemic that we're still kind of in the middle of. Still um, kind of. <laughs> I'm hopeful. I have to phrase it that way. Oh. All while I'm saying this and my daughter's classroom is closed because right. someone in her class is COVID. So, I mean, she's home with me and hasn't left um, our world. But um, I remember when she was starting and I was like, I cried thinking about her leaving and going to school. I think I remember telling you this, Gina, that like, I couldn't imagine like not leaving. having her home every oh. day, like dropping her off for school, her going in. It just brought me to tears. Whereas I'm like, like, see ya. Yeah. Your kids were already, they had done like the daycare world. So you're like, I'm good. I mean, to I'm be fair, there. they're, they're typically the ones crying at me. So, <laughs> um, and now, of course, she loved school. It became that she would scream when I would go pick her up. Yeah. Like, no, mom, I want to stay. So then I was like, okay, good. You're good. I'm good. And now the school year's coming to an end. And I'm like, all right, we already have been in this groove of a schedule for so long. And now we get to come up with a new groove and a new schedule. Yeah. So we're going to have our kids home every day. You don't, you well, don't, I, you yeah, get a I'm little not. Well, I typically yeah. pull the boys out of daycare for the summer, um, teacher contract. Um, but some stuff with my job, um, is shifting. Um, I, at this point I actually don't even know how everything's going to kind of play out, um, a few different options, but either way, um, will no longer have summers off. I mean, I think summers will be flexible more so than right. they are during the school year. Um, right. But, but I think when that, people hear like, oh, you're a teacher, you're in the school world, you work the school year and then you have fun, have the summers off. Right. Which is not, not the case for you. Me. Yeah. Um, right. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll stay in the daycare world. Although the older one has been begging to come with me to work. Um, I brought Take him. him, I brought him a couple times <laughs> last summer when I was working summer school, um, and he had a blast. So he keeps asking to go back. So I might do Aww. that maybe a once Little or twice helper. this summer. Yeah. So I want to chat a little bit about thinking about that shift of having our kids and how can we kind of do a little preparing ourselves of what do we do with them? How do use our time, how to use our time with our kids, how to have time for ourselves, how to kind of manage some of those behaviors that teachers, you know, they get then had been dealing and managing for the whole year. I wanted to kick it off by just talking a little bit about self-care, knowing that it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, for me, I think especially with two kids, um, you know, self-care is always talked about, right? I feel like yeah. people are like, it's important to like, take care of yourself, take that mom time. Um, and it's, I found it was easier, obviously to do that when you just have one kid and now with two, 
it's even, it's harder and more important at the same time. A hundred percent. Yeah. So it's, and for me, I've also, it was never like a formal diagnosis of any kind. Although I just feel like I know my body is that I definitely experienced some postpartum anxiety where I remember going to my doctor and telling her, you know, after like, you know, you do the six week checkup. Great. Yeah. This was a little bit after. Um, so it wasn't like directly postpartum. It really kind of lingered where I remember telling her in my mind, I have these thoughts that I need to work out. I need to become like a great runner. I need to become like physically fit because I was having all these like anxious feelings and intrusive thoughts about like something happening to my kids. Oh. Like whether we were out at a park, like I would think about like if somebody tried to take them or if we were at Target and something happened. So, so you like, just need to be like in your top physical yeah. Fitness and like, let me specify state. while I'm like a petite person, I am by no means a runner, nor have I ever been. Yeah. And I'm not like the, I'm not like an Olympic athlete. Like I obviously like to stay fit, but I'm not like that is, it wasn't like something that I was doing pre kids. Right. Like that was my life. Um, so like all of a sudden I have these thoughts that I, I needed to be in like the peak, like best physical shape of my life. Well, I'm over here eating gushers and pop tarts. I mean, I like need you. You're my support. Captain Crunch berries. I eat crap. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Cause I, well, it didn't change what I was doing. Like I still, it was just like my thoughts told me I had to do yeah. that and I never really did anything. So what it came down to is just me noticing that my like anxious feelings post kids had definitely like heightened. Um, and so that's why for me, I really take like self-care, whatever it looks like to heart. Like I just feel like a difference when I find time for me as hard as it is. Yeah, I definitely have to. And I definitely experienced that, whether it was postpartum anxiety, depression, I think it was um, kind of formally diagnosed as a postpartum mood disorder. Um, so I definitely, you know, take some medication to help kind of balance me out a little bit, but even that's not always enough. Right. And I think that anyone who works in mental health will say like medication is not just like an easy fix. Like you still have to engage in other things, whether it's therapy, self-care, um, things to kind of take care of yourself. So, um, I am also the same way in that I am not someone who enjoys like working out. I don't enjoy (laughs) sweating. Um, but I do enjoy like being outside, getting some fresh air, going for walks. If I'm in like a lower state, sometimes it does take a little bit of like extra motivation to get me out the door, but for sure, definitely that like fresh air. My happy place is our lake house. I could just chill outside in the woods. Yeah, having a glass of wine. You have like those scheduled times to go out there and that's like key, like getting that oxygen to the brain, doing that. Um, And I agree, like having those like trips to go on and that's kind of like the luxury of like self-care world in my mind, like doing those big things. Um, Do you ever get the nice mom guilt that comes with that? Yes, although I feel like it's gotten better as I've gotten as I've gotten older, the, the boys have gotten older. Um, I don't feel like as bad because I know I need it so badly. Like I yeah. love my children, but I also love my time away from them. Um, yeah. and always have been good about like sending them off to a grandparent's house for a sleepover or sending them to my sisters, um, to play with their cousins. Um, I'm not the best about having like outside sitters come watch them. I need to be a little bit better about that. We have like a few, yeah. um, trusted sitters that are not close friends or family. Um, I definitely just don't access them as often as I should. And I also feel like, I don't know if you're like this, but like, I feel bad leaving two children with those sitters. Like I didn't feel yes. as bad when it was just the one, 
Um, like, oh yeah, the, the sitter can handle it. You know, um, our old boss's daughter is in high school. She, you know, for a couple summers would help me out as like a mother's helper and, and babysit. Um, but like, once I had two, I was like, this is just not manageable. And I don't know why I think that because plenty of people do it. Right. And your kids, like in my mind, it's, they're not the most difficult kids. Although no, now I, mean, I think my about, they are, but right. what my, your kids are my kids, mine. Oh, <laughs> um, but they're your, I don't even think your kids are not that it's, hard either. It's more my it's younger just, one. It's just so funny. I agree with you when you're like, it's too, it feels so much more difficult to leave them with someone that's like, not a grandparent or not my right. sister, or not yeah. my cousin, like somebody that I'm related to in some way. Um, but it is, I do go through like what I feel like is like the roller coaster of at the beginning where if I know I'm leaving, like I just left this past weekend to go um, on like a bachelorette party and I was always going to go. Like there was never an option that I wasn't going to go because I have kids, right? Like, right. I'm going, I'm in, this is my time. Um, my husband and I both have like bachelor bachelorette parties this weekend uh, or this summer, a lot of weddings. And so like leading up to it, I'm like, I feel so guilty about leaving. I'm trying to get like everything in order, making sure like laundry's done. The house is somewhat clean. Things are in order. I've listed out like routines and things like that, even though my husband's watching them and like, he knows they are kids. Right. Yeah. He's their dad. Right. Um, and so it's like, up until I leave, I'm feeling that guilt. But then once I'm there, I'm good. Like yeah, I like- miss them. Obviously my husband will send me pictures, which I love if I'm ever away for like a long, like a night away or a long weekend. He'll send me pictures, videos, but I'm like enjoying myself. I agree with you. It's, it's so important to then recharge. Well, and I feel like, I don't know. I'm sure. I don't know what, what your kids are like when you're trying to get out the door, but my kids, especially the younger one, like the older one is very much used to us going out for a night out or going out for the weekend and dropping them off with the grandparents. So he's always like, bye mommy, have fun. And then the younger one though, like knows when I'm getting, it's like my dog, like can just sense <laughs> like that getting I'm getting ready to leave yeah. them behind and he loses it. Yes. Yeah. My and younger that makes one me anxious. Mm-hmm. And I like just want to yeah. leave the house, but then super excited to see his cute little face when I get back home. Yeah. And then I feel good. Like I, um, when I got back from this weekend, you know, I realized like my husband's with, been with them for three and a half days straight that I'm good. Like I can come in the door and like know that I had my time and I am back in like full force mom mode and good about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love that you're going out for like bachelorette weekends. And I feel like I've gone back in time a little bit with all these like well, events I have. <laughs> same, but different because we had a birthday party at medieval times this past weekend. And I, I did not realize that. adults still go there. There were people pre-gaming in the parking lot. What do you mean? I feel like people love medieval times. Okay. I well. haven't been since like middle school on like a field trip, but I'm taking my, when I taught fifth grade and I used to take them for their like end of year celebration. That's the last time I went. Yes. Oh my God. Were you having so much fun or no? You're like, well, yes, because this was the first time I could drink at medieval times. Uh, Did your night win? No, but that's a whole thing. It it was great. (laughs) So I don't even want to talk about it. It's a sore subject. Oh my. Oh, well, of course it's, I hope you're not just not realizing that it now that it's rigged. I mean, before it was always like, just making sure that all the students like behaved themselves. No one got lost. Yeah. Like different lens. Yes. It's tough. So you're right. We've gone back in time. I'm going to bachelor parties. You're going to medieval times. I'm going to medieval times for friends who are in their twenties and I'm about to hit 40. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. But I do feel like for self-care, like I know, you know, like we find time to do things in the city, which I think you're a pro at finding like fun events. Like we just did a cookie decorating and like a dried floral Flora, arrangement yeah, a class. Bouquet. And you've done like a handful of those. And I love that. I feel like if I can not only be with my friends, do something out, 
but also maybe do something new. Yeah. I feel like that is, I love doing that with my time. I think that's important to like keep trying new things um, to make me feel like I'm not, well, for me, especially like being home and with my kids all yeah. day, every day, like to feel like I'm still using my brain in an adult way is nice. <laughs> And of course, like I feel like self care, like loving getting my nails done. That's like an easy one. Or if like oh, I Manny's just need like Manny's petties, like that's a great one. I love doing in like a shopping event or like just going out. And I'm like, I'm gonna go peruse Home Goods without my kids. Like I can go up and down every aisle, or like I'm gonna go to Target by myself. I'm gonna go to the mall by myself. Um, Massages, although yeah there have been the unfortunate incidents where like the masseuse just talks nonstop and then that no longer is self-care. It's really annoying. No, it becomes therapy for them. But yeah, for them, then you just not for us. advocate like, Hey, I need no, right. Yeah. For that, <laughs> for the, for the um, masseuse, masseuse, but, uh, being able to advocate like, Hey, I'm, this is my time away. Shut it down. Yeah. Just quiet time. Um, but Self-care doesn't always mean you have to like spend money. I think that's also a shift in like my idea of self-care. It always like for self-care to me, it went like, let's go do my nails. Let's go shopping. Like those were like my two main ones that would like come to mind. Same. And now it's like, if I just want to like block out time to like organize. And for me, like organizing, like my clothes, like something in my room, my kids' toys. Like I enjoy that, which I think is key to self care. Is that it's like something for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I enjoy organizing and doing that stuff. Like that brings me like peace, calmness. Like I feel good about that. It doesn't feel like you want to come organize my closet. My husband would probably yeah, love I you will. for it. I'm. I'm happy to like you know all those people who like have all their videos of organizing and like the before and afters like I live for that it's amazing I don't mind so, organizing it it's just like the constant upkeep to keep yeah. it organized is where I struggle <laughs> yeah if I you can see that husband. so but when it comes to like self-care it shouldn't be a chore if that makes sense yes. like for you organizing does not equal self-care organizing can it's the the maintenance to keep it that way (laughs) that no longer is self-care for myself it feels like a chore yeah so yeah I mean I also like baking reading I feel like anything no not that okay fine take back reading for you but baking we both it depends you gotta find the right book yeah of course. I feel like so, if I could get into a book club, that could be a fun form of self-care, like reading the book, having some adult conversation. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I, no. Well, maybe. Didn't you I, used to do a book club? I did with my husband, my brother-in-laws, like a couple friends and every month somebody would choose. And for me, it was like, very stressful to pick the book and it's also like props to like my husband and his brothers and their friends like they're all very smart very smart so like I remember reading a book um thank you um (laughs) there was one book and then we'll all kind of agree that it was I think I made it like 12 pages and you know how you teach kids to read if there's like five words on the page they don't know then the book is too hard for them yep that's how I felt about this one book. And uh, I kind of like lost steam after that. I was like, I don't, I can't, and I don't know how to discuss this. It's just over my head in lots of different ways. So yeah. I feel like, it, yes, I did try a book club, but I was like, who wants to just do a movie club or who wants to just do like, try a new recipe club um, or dinner so club that we used to do. Yeah. We used to do dinner club. That was fun. So I think that'd be a great idea for people who are self-care of like someone had to pick up restaurant that they hadn't been to. Mm-hmm. And so once a month we went to essentially like, we got to all, try different all these places. New restaurants. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I love that. I mean, my one set of girlfriends, we go out to dinner, at least we try to once a month and we were really good before a couple of people had some new babies. 
about planning our next dinner before we left. It's like we knew we would have something to look forward to. And like that helped keep everybody like, okay, we're all doing this. You know, most of us are moms. So we knew how important like scheduling that time is. Yeah. How do you like to, to like maintain that sanity now that you've got kids? Of like, like self care of myself. Yeah. It's definitely hard. I feel like I try my best to communicate with my husband of like what I need. Um, and if there's, and now what I've done, which I love like making lists and having like multiple calendars for myself, like trackers, planners, I think in like the academic world, that's just like a thing. Like teachers, I loved it. It's like a a paper planner. I loved it. Yeah. Like a planner planning my day out, making lists of what I need to get done appointments coming up for myself or kids that I put up a calendar on our wall in our kitchen and it took a while for my husband to not only like use it but reference it Uh, so like he'll I'll like put up things that I have coming up he'll put down like if he has like work events he'll write it on there so we can kind of see like who is going to be where and so I think that's helped that that he can see okay, maybe like this stretch of time, I haven't really had like anything scheduled. So I need to do something for myself. Whereas if I have like a girl's dinner coming up, like I take that time of like, all right, I got this, like it's coming up, but if I don't have anything and I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to want to go get my nails done this week, or I'm going to go have dinner with you. And I'm going to go meet Sheena in the city or do something like that. So I think communication is important in so many ways, but also when it comes to self-care. So even though you think like you're doing it kind of quote unquote, like by yourself for yourself, it's important to like have my husband understand what I need and when and why. And I'm sure he needs it too. Like I know my husband enjoys, you know, going out for burgers with boys or Or golfing is coming up. That's yeah. Yep. He'll go Mm -hmm. to the movies by himself and that's totally fine. Um, but I think it's as important as it is for us as moms. It's also important for dads or um, for any caregivers. Yeah. And I think with like summer coming up, I know we talked about that at the beginning where, you know, my daughter was was going to school for like three hours for three days a week. And now she'll be home. Like I, I did sign them up for like swim lessons and she's doing gymnastics again but as there's still things like I have to go to, and I'm taking her to, um, but I like to think and take this time. I think I only have like a couple weeks before her school is out, but to do like, do some Pinteresting of like fun summer activities. And not to say that I need to be like an entertainment director. Right. I don't need to have, nor should anyone feel like they have to have the day like planned out like a camp. Um, but maybe like twice a week, trying something new or preparing an activity new to try not only so like they'll have fun, but then I don't get bored as well. Right. Um, right. or just feeling like, okay, I've been sitting here and we're, I'm looking at the same toys that I've looked at all year round that what else can we do? Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy the retail therapy probably slightly too much. Right. Um, yeah. But, but I need to not do that. <laughs> I know, but it's also nice. Like the boys really enjoy when a box comes and they turn it into a house or a car and they, you know, they'll climb in it, they'll decorate it. And it's just like a quick, easy, I'm going to say yeah. cheap toy, but probably no, but what I was in the, in the box was not cheap, but you know yeah. what I mean? Well, your shoes are great. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, all those shoes you ordered. But yeah, I think what I do love about like taking that time to like, if I'm going to Pinterest instead of just like mindlessly scrolling on Instagram, but if I can Pinterest and not, not so much to like, think about what I can buy, but how can I use what I already have? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, our kids are fortunate enough. Like we have a great amount of toys. I have lots of different games and things like that from like speech therapy days. Like how can I use what I have for maybe something I didn't think about? 
especially like what can we do outside? You know, we've been yes. stuck indoors and finally it shifted that we can be outside. And my kids, I love that they love to be outside. So when we can, like, what can I take outside? Yep. What can I do outside? Um, and like, I think it's important to like, I, in my mind, I sometimes I break up the day of like, all right, if I'm just going to do like a morning something and then it's lunchtime and then it's right. nap time. And then we have an afternoon activity, like we'll go for a walk or something. And then I like to, if my daughter's in a good place, like help with dinner prep. Um, not always the case, but I do feel like breaking up the day in my mind, at least is helpful yeah. to kind of maintain my sanity of not feeling like this is going to be a long day, right? It's a long night. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think you were saying earlier, like baking is one form of self-care for you. Like my older son yep. loves to bake. That's something that's always fun to do together. I always keep a stack of bubbles and sidewalk chalk. Those yes. are always really easy ones. Um, you know, I, I think like the dollar section at target always has like something always, um, five and below any of those, yeah. like the dollar stores. Um, yeah. And what I've also done too with bubbles is I'll buy like, it's basically like a detergent size of, we call it bubble juice. <laughs> um, but it's basically like a refill. So once you buy the bubble containers, I mean, my son who is one and a half just loves to pour it out, pour yes. it all out. Yeah. Doesn't last long. So then I don't, so then I can fill it up like a container, like an inch. And I don't have to worry about him dumping the entire container of bubble juice. Right. So I feel like if you're, I don't know where, I mean, I think target places like that would have these like ginormous containers of yeah. bubble yeah. juice. I think too, on like those rainy days, I know, I think I talked about this on the episode that we had with Kimberly, um, cause she's got like the bath product lines, but we have all kinds of bath bombs and bath crayons and stuff like that for like the rainy days. So you can just stick them in the tub yes. also in the summer, stick them in the tub for their popsicle. And then you can just clean them up right in there. Oh, that's smart. Oh yeah. I can't, the, that that's where my anxiety starts to shoot through the roof when like the, the popsicle the juice and stickiness oh. is like getting everywhere. So yeah, eases my anxiety by just letting them eat it in the tub. So they're already there for cleanup. That's smart. I do feel like that's one thing that I've like let go a little bit of a control. Can't. I will do like two big cleanups. I, I call them like two big cleanups. So, like one at nap time, I kind of do like a little sweep through of like pick up things that have been left out or do dishes and bottles. And then at night where I think before I was trying to like always put things back in their place as soon as I kind of thought my kid was done playing with it. So that has helped my sanity a little bit of just yeah. letting know like it's okay that it gets messy for a bit. And another thing that it's helped with my sanity when having my kids around and they're around, it's great that it's okay for them to be bored yes. that I do. Like I said earlier, I don't have to be the entertainment doctor. I don't feel like I have to have like 15 minute increments of activities planned because even the best laid plans, like our kids are just at the age where they lose interest pretty quickly, which is fine. Even if I think it's like a really fun activity that should last 30 minutes to an hour and it lasts five to 13 that they can my daughter's pretty good. And now my son I'm noticing is, is getting pretty good at like playing independently. It's like my daughter will go into a room. So as long as things, and I, one thing I do like about the organizing piece that I said earlier is that I'll rotate their toys and I'll put toys that, um, if my one and a half year old is going to pull something down, it's not going to like hurt him. Yeah. Well, my daughter knows like all of her little doll figurines are in this one big basket and I'll every once in a while, like catch her and she has them like all set up. She's playing with them. It's like, she also knows where things are that she can just go play by herself, which is yeah, cute. That's how we are. You know, we've got the basket of the dinosaurs, the basket of the cars mm -hmm. and the basket of the animals. Yeah. So I think there's just a lot of things you can do for self-care. It's just finding what makes you feel recharged, taking that time. Sometimes it's just like five, 10 minutes. Other times it is like that weekend away and both are important to do. Yeah. And so we're going to 
coming up. Like we know as kids are, you know, they're home for summer, maybe they're at camps, which is great. Um, but thinking about how to manage some of those behaviors you might be seeing, we're going to be touching on some strategies that we like to use as well as getting ready for any traveling you might do. You know, Sheena, you've right. done some big traveling this year. I just got back from a trip. We have a couple of trips planned this summer as well. So I wanted to share some of our tidbits on traveling with kids. How do you maintain your sanity when attempting to travel with kids? Because it's not always easy. Nope. But take that time to prepare yourself with that self-care and it might be a little bit easier. Yep. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all of the latest, you can follow us on Instagram at underscore and then we had kids. Thanks again. And like we say, life used to be carefree and then we had kids. <laughs>